Hello and welcome to the Real Gary Tussie Podcast, where we talk about anything and everything that could ever amount to anything or everything to anybody and everybody who ever intends to amount to something. We'll be right back. Hello and welcome to this edition of the Real Gary Tussie Podcast. Appreciate you joining us on this um, we, it's a Monday as we're doing a live feed. We do a live feed when we're producing our podcast, a live feed over Facebook. Good morning, Don. We have got the greatest audience on the planet there is something about the early riser that just it just encourages me that there is hope for this people planet that we are planted on and um, joining me uh live via facebook as we produce podcasts that will go global uh we're launching the first of april and uh or sometime hopefully as close to the first of april as possible i want to want to shout out and be uh, grateful to those who are helping us be and do all that we uh be and do uh there's great people out there that uh help um uh help each other to to be and do and accomplish what they be and what they do and i want to shout out to kubota we own a, a, a excavation company called uh tussie excavation and we our equipment is exclusively kubota equipment a kubota skid loader kubota mini excavator at the at the moment that does more than enough for what we need and what we get done in our in our business but Kubota is the is the equipment and before you buy Kubota equipment let us run Kubota equipment on a project you may have then if you need to buy equipment I highly recommend that it is Kubota and in doing so our local we bought through a central equipment and chad freeman sold us and we're just very very happy with that equipment hey on today's uh, podcast we're going to talk about restrictions that are put things that really restrict our um, liberty because we, and we i think if we're aware of them uh it might maybe get help us begin to think a little bit as to how we can make a difference in our lives and in our uh, how we can contribute to make things a uh, uh go our way a little bit for instance here's what i here's what I'm, i want to talk about if you enjoy bread as many people do as a matter of fact most of uh most of society and humanity eat some sort of bread. I know there's the gluten free thing now that everybody's all gluten free and uh but if you enjoy bread and you are numbered among millions of people who do and you sometimes like to make your own bread and you like to just bake your own bread and which means that you've got to come up with some flour from somewhere and if you come up with flour uh, you may get the idea sometime that you know what i think i would like to grow my own wheat in my back garden and produce my own flour and make my own bread that way or my or or, or some grain and whole grains and this that and the other and i'm going to produce well i don't know if you knew this or not so i'm going to inform you and that is that it is completely illegal for you to grow wheat in your backyard it's completely illegal for you might as well grow a marijuana on your farm as to grow wheat without being uh permitted and licensed because they will take your property away if you grow wheat on your on your um property and then for any reason let alone but this is for my own use this is so we can make our own flour and i can teach the kids how to be self-sustained and i can you know we can do what we you, it is illegal you can't do it um, which I think is very interesting. And when I caught that, when I caught information about that some years ago, it started me thinking, wow, uh, something as simple and as rudimentary as simply growing wheat. 
uh, on your own property to bake your own bread. What else? What are some of the other restrictions that uh, that, that we are cumbered about with that um, th- that maybe we don't even realize has been stripped from from us? Now, remember, something else we're always doing on this podcast is encouraging you to realize that you're not a victim. And as long as you have a victim's mentality, you are not going to be and do and be the person you are remember the, the original writings of the authors of the uh, of of our uh, founding documents that we are all created equal we are all created equal in that we have the same opportunity to be and express ourselves as our creator has created us to do so well um there we have to be mindful of not allow uh, of of not allowing ourselves to have a victim's mentality is as to well they the government are what's holding me back there is no they the government without we the people and the and the minute the whatever time that was in your life when the switch was turned off that you've become that your consciousness of government and government governing is they the government instead of we the people that has just driven and and, and driven down and 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 me- and melted down and milked down the ability uh, or the great um, the greatness that we ought to be and we should be walking in every day. So you know, I found this. I googled this. It, isn't Google amazing? Is it what can't you learn? On Google, it used to be encyclopedias, and now we we don't even need encyclopedias. Any information you need, and of course you have to weigh it all. You have to consider it all. Is this the truth? Who's reporting this? Who's saying this? Uh, what and where do they get their information? But uh, as I was thinking about the restrictions that are uh, regulations, I'm not even talking about laws. Of course, regulations enter into law. Um, uh, but regulations that hinder, um, and we don't even realize some of them are ridiculous. And so I pulled up something on, and I'll show this on the um, on our real cams and on our uh, uh, fa- Facebook feed live. This is twelve ridiculous government regulations that are almost too bizarre to believe. So that's what I that's what I brought. So I'm going to kind of thumb through these, and I think it's very interesting to to hear okay number number one private investigators license and i'm i'm giving you this just to make you just to help you think think a little bit all right now the state of texas now requires every new computer repair technician to obtain a private investigators license in order to receive a private investigators license an individual must either have a degree in criminal justice or must complete a three-year apprenticeship with a licensed private investigator. If you are a computer repair technician that violates this law or if you are a regular citizen that has a computer repaired by someone not in compliance with the law, you can be fined up to $4,000 and you can be put in jail for a year. Good morning, James. I always shout out to to our live feed we produce these podcasts while we've got live feed on uh, on facebook and thank you for nominating me the most interesting man on facebook live from the five to six o'clock a.m hour i greatly appreciate that today we're talking about silly ridiculous um uh, regulations. So I started out by telling you, don't even think about growing wheat on your own property. The, 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 uh, government, which is established by we, the people is not going to let you do that. Uh, you could lose your property. Now we're talking about the, to, to, you have to have in Texas a private investigator's license to be a computer repair man. And to get that license, uh, you, in in order to receive a private investigator's license an individual an individual must either have a degree in criminal justice so now to be a computer repair person you have to get your degree in criminal justice or you have to work with a private investigator a licensed private investigator for 3 years 
Okay, not three months, three years to be able to work on computers. So there's one for you. A uh, funeral director. Now get this. Th- this is so interesting. How I skip from one to three, I don't know. One, two, three. Oh, this is interesting. Let me read you this. Are you with me this morning? This is interesting. Business privilege license for bloggers, because this kind of affects us. This is the city of Philadelphia now requires all bloggers. You know what a blogger is? They write, they write columns about whatever their interest is, and they do it over over line. It's available usually on their um, on their. Um, website the city of philadelphia now requires all bloggers to purchase a 300 dollars business privilege license the city even went after one poor woman who had earned uh, only 11 dollars from her blog over the past two years but you have to get a 300 dollars license just to speak your mind on the internet Okay, well, that's interesting. These are regulations that you didn't, you don't know they're there. You never know when you're going to turn the corner in a regulation you're not even aware of. And a sad indictment about regulations is they're usually imposed by people who were never elected to office. Um, It's usually somebody appointed to something that... uh, uh, who knows? And 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 most li- evidently they don't have your best interest in mind. Uh, number three is very uh, interesting to me, and, and I I got this from I showed you a moment ago. I got this from off uh, off of a Google. Twelve ridiculous government regulations that are almost too bizarre to to believe. Hey Terry, good morning. Let's be free and let's set other people free and let's live and let live and let's apply a high energy pursuit to happiness this week. Yeah. How about that? You can email me at realgarytussie at gmail.com. I'm checking it constantly. Got it right here. Just full throttle wide open. So good morning, everyone. Special place in my heart for the early riser. We produce this podcast in the wee wee hours of the morning and uh, appreciate the podcast people hanging with us too now this one's interesting a funeral director license for monks are you listening to this listen to this the state of louisiana says that monks must be fully licensed as funeral funeral directors and and actually convert their monasteries into licensed funeral homes wait for it before they will be allowed to sell their handmade wooden caskets. Mercy. They've done that for decades. Uh, and now all of a sudden they, they, not an oversight from someone, not even an oversight from someone who is licensed as a funeral director. They have to literally become a funeral director to continue to build the, uh, the uh wooden furniture that we bury human bodies in so um interesting thing so we'll talk about this maybe on the next podcast maybe not on the next uh, half hour stay tuned with those of you live i give you the telephone number to be able to call in live during the second half hour so we're going to talk about some more really cool and groovy stuff did i say groovy why would i do that i guess because i eat adversity for breakfast while it's still crunchy and i'm encouraging you to do the same thing so we want to live and let live we want to be free and set others free and we want to apply a high energy pursuit of happiness in our lives and that's what we're going to do so hang with me live facebook group for another half hour we're going to produce another podcast and until then tussie out